Hi, everyone, and welcome to Life Bulb Live. I'm Anne Marie, and I'm sitting with Karin again for our weekly chat. And this time, we're going to just talk about community and connecting with people. There's nothing more than realizing that you're not alone in any journey that you're on. So, Karin, do you want to talk about who we're, who we're going to be bringing on? <laughs> now, today is a, is a really exciting uh, a live chat. It's always exciting to talk to you, Anne Marie. But uh, uh, today, I'm, I'm really happy to uh, be talking to a member of our Transplant Life community and a really important one. Uh, so, Alicia, who will introduce herself um, soon, is uh, a new member of the Lifebulb community, but importantly, also someone who is really driving conversations on Transplant Life, our new. Uh, transplant um, uh, community where individuals who had an organ um, an organ transplant or someone who has given an organ a donor or a care partner someone who's supporting someone um, with an organ transplant are all joining in a forum um, and uh, starting conversations replying to conversations but also connecting one-on-one -on -one. and of course using a journal um, there is a journal function on transplant life that is exciting, where you can take notes, where you can keep your metrics, and um, uh, of course also links to various different resources. Our goal for Transplant Life is to have as many as possible join us and um, uh, to do as many, uh, many things as possible together uh, with many other organizations. We're not alone in this. And there are many great individuals as well as organizations in the transplant community that we want to bring along. So welcome, Alicia, and thank you, Anne-Marie. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we are excited um, to have you. <laughs> thank you. So I'll just start by sharing a little bit of my story. Um, I received a liver transplant actually six months ago right now. Um, I... So that was August of 2020. I was born with a genetic metabolic condition. Um, it's called glycogen storage disease. And so basically my liver was missing one of the enzymes that you were, you need to turn glycogen into glucose or store sugar into usable sugar. Uh, and I had a really severe case of that. I was always in and out of the hospital when I was super young, even just like the flu could be super deadly. Uh, so I was on continuous G-tube feeds. I had cornstarch boluses every two hours around the clock my entire life. Um, and then when I was in college, actually, my body just stopped responding to treatments. Like everything they were trying wasn't working. Um, it, it just went downhill really, really fast. So they listed me for transplant, for liver transplant, because I've kind of run out of options. Um, and originally I was actually supposed to get a living donor transplant. My brother um, had been matched to be my living donor. So I went in to the hospital on August 14th, totally expecting to have my brother's liver, um, only to wake up in September and find out it was not my brother's liver after all. Um, so they had given me his liver. I rejected it right away. And so four days later, I actually had a deceased donor liver. It was flown across the country. And then I spent two weeks in the ICU on a ventilator. Um, and then I was moved to the transplant floor. And now I am six months out from my transplant. I'm doing great. And yeah, Incredible. aside from my whole transplant I journey, I'm also a writer and a photographer. And I live with my husband and my dog in Canada. Karen, that was the exact word I was thinking is incredible. Like I was, that it's just an incredible story, Alicia. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. It's remarkable. Uh, I mean, walking in, literally thinking that you're going to have one liver from your brother, okay. you're kind of thinking you've, you've thought about it, you've got comfortable with it, you know, mm -hmm. you've talked to him about it, and, and then you were not even conscious enough to understand that, I mean, I guess that it was. <laughs> And they 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 must have had someone sign, uh, you know, maybe your husband. Uh, yeah. That it was uh, instead a diseased donor that that gave you life again, which yeah. which is remarkable. So for your brother, that must also have been difficult, right? I mean, uh, yes. Like yeah, he ended up having his own health complications afterwards, and he's doing awesome now. He's actually back in college and. Um, doing great but yeah he also spent quite a bit of time in the hospital and 
really struggled with that. And then he also had like the effects of the surgery and recovering from that, even though I didn't end up taking his liver, he still had to go through all that pain that comes with donating the liver. So you know, it illustrates the point that it's, of course, you were the, the critically ill and you were the one who, who really needed uh, saving at that point with, with the diseased donor uh, organ. But there's so many others involved in this process. I mean, if you think about yeah. your brother, you think about your spouse, your, your husband, your parents, I mean, people around you who must have been, I mean, your parents, can you imagine? I mean, the, your <laughs> my brother, poor parents. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine having two of my kids yeah. go through surgery like that. I mean, they must yeah. have. So um, Alicia, what was it that attracted you to Transplant Life? And how, how did you find out about it? So I found out once I had been moved to the transplant floor, I realized that I was absolutely not equipped to deal with this whatsoever. I had one kind of idea of like, oh, this is how it's going to be. And then it was not that at all. And I didn't know what I was doing. And because of there was because of COVID, there wasn't the same resources that were available to me that there normally would have been when I was on the transplant floor. So I would stay up at night and I would scroll through my phone through like Instagram and Facebook. And I would like Google every single hashtag I could think of, like liver transplant and under 30. And like I was looking for anybody that could kind of give me insight into this process and what I was going through. And I actually connected with some um, friends on Instagram who had also had transplants and they're the ones that introduced me to transplant life. And that was like right at the very, very beginning in the early baby stages. You were searching for your tribe. I, I totally oh, yeah. understand that as someone, you know, who's had cancer and a million other illnesses, you look for people that you can connect with. It's you, mm -hmm. you, you know, theoretically, there's all these people out there going through what you're going through, but you do still feel so alone. Like the, the, the loneliness part of it is immense. So you're searching for your tribe and you totally found it. I said it before we jumped on. Mm -hmm. Your voice comes through so strongly on Transplant Life. It's so clear and you're speaking from your heart. And I always say platforms like this are so important because we don't know what to Google. We don't know what to ask because we've never yeah. been there. Other people yeah. have, so we have to learn from them. What is one thing you have learned personally from Transplant Life? What was something that, you know, a post or something that stood out to you that you really learned from? Um. I I learned I that it wasn't. Right at you. <laughs> no, I learned that I wasn't weird. Like I was going through all these things. I'm like, oh, other people have did this too. I'm not behind. I'm not like the only one who's experiencing this weird physical like reaction to my incision site. Or like I got super emotional about my donor and knowing that like this was a deceased donor and this liver used to be inside of someone else and now it's in me. And like to know I wasn't the only one that was feeling that was so helpful. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And do you also feel that you have helped others? I hope so. No, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I really uh, tried to be transparent and share my story. Scared. Yeah. Because that's, that's part of the healing as well. I mean, you're so oh, yeah. new to it. Uh, but when you reach that point, uh, when you're not just searching for answers, but you're also providing, and I think you have, because I've learned from you, oh, uh, thank I you. you, and I read your responses, and uh, I I learn from you, and it's really it's really interesting um, you know, for someone. I'm 12 and 11 years out, uh, and I'm more, uh, you know, so I have more experience than you. But uh, and we don't have the same organ, a kidney, pancreas, but still, it's yeah. pretty similar. There's similar similarities, mm -hmm. and I think I'm not sure. I, I wish when I was six months out that I had had this kind of connectivity, because yeah. for me, it was really trying to put one foot, you know, the other, I, I, I was really trying yeah. just every day. And I saw it as an every day, but I didn't have that place to go where, as Emery says, the tribe or, or the, 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 the group of people or that one person, uh, mm -hmm. finding someone like you uh, is, is, is really important. I agree. I think you are helping more people than you probably even realize. I think when people read it, they may not comment, but you said something just now, like you said, I realized I wasn't weird. And I, I can relate to that on so many different levels. You know, when someone shares their story, you realize, oh my gosh, it's not odd that I'm thinking whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you and I, Alicia, were talking about your support system and you have a great support system with you. And I know different things I've gone through. It's really hard to keep talking to your support system because you feel like you're constantly inundating them with your illness and your aches and your pains and your medicine and all of that. And you almost feel like 
you know, they don't want to hear it anymore. Not that they don't, yeah. not that they don't want to hear it, but you feel that. And there is something to be able to connect with people like this and to share, you know, your journal and being able to talk about different progress that you're having or, you know, challenges you're having. And also not just talking to someone who's, who you pay to talk to. Yes. So there, there's something with that. And maybe it's because I'm not American, but I, <laughs> I never fully understand the therapist. I don't understand the therapist. Oh, girl, I need my therapist. I'd be lost without my therapist. <laughs> no, That's my BFF. I like to speak to people who are there because they actually want to be there and, mm -hmm. and they're not there to, to, to get paid to listen to my problems. So I, I, I really appreciate this kind of community. Um, and you don't want to download only on your friends who are not in the same position. So there's there's a point to this community. How, Alicia, how do we how do we reach other young people, other other individuals who uh, are like us? I mean, I'm, I'm trying, of course, all the time, but you come from a different perspective. Is there anything that you think we should do? do? I mean, in my experience I just kind of put it out there on social media and that was more for me is like I really wanted to document this process and have the whole thing so I could look back on it years from now and be like oh yeah this is what I went through every step of the way and then all of these people just kind of like found me <laughs> I guess but like yeah there's we kind of created this whole community on like Instagram with hashtags and I think social media is a big way that people are connecting now is we like the ease of Facebook and Instagram and just like click and find people. I know for me, it's just like, I don't want to talk to someone face to face because I'm like, oh, that's weird, but I'll totally spend hours DMing with somebody. And I think that's just the culture now is like, we're a very instant messaging back and forth kind of group of people. Actually, Karen, mm -hmm. she's got a really great point because it's not just about talking to someone face to face when you're behind the computer and or on your phone, you can let your guard down a little bit and really share yeah. some pr pretty personal things so that you know, you don't you don't have the fear of judgment, which is you know silly in this world, but it's true. We do we do feel like people are going to judge us for saying something weird. But when you when you have a beautiful community like Transplant Life, you you don't you don't get that at all. Right? Mm -hmm. And it is like a support group. You know, I joked just now about therapy because I do love my therapist, but I also love my support group. I mean, there's something really to be said about being around a group of people that have been through what you've been through. You're, you're 11, 12 years out. She's six months out, but you can still connect with each other. Yeah. Your demographic is completely different, but you can still connect with each other. That is freaking amazing. Like that is so powerful. It's actually amazing to meet you like this, Alicia, because <laughs> yeah. I feel like I know you and, and you know things about me that you know many people probably don't. And and now we see each other. It's 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 it really is. powerful. Uh, yeah. now I want to talk to you even more. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's putting it's it's interesting. I wonder uh, you said you do photography as well. Do you think yeah. there's a point is a point about sharing photos? I mean your your way of expressing yourself. I mean you write really well. But putting that picture out there as well as a symbol in your daily journal, uh, what do you think of that? That's more of an Instagram, I guess. Yeah, well, that's something I just really got into after my transplant, actually, because I needed a way to, when I couldn't talk, I needed a way to express what I was feeling. And I found I could create really powerful images and really powerful contrast in the hospital, which is an area that you know you don't normally see photographs happening in a hospital it's not really the best like most aesthetic setting or whatever but I found that I could really show people a different part of my experience and I could see it in a different way myself when I was looking through my camera and intentionally being an artist creating art rather than a patient stuck in the moment and spiraling and you know I could kind of take myself out of that and be an artist which I found really just it was really helpful for my healing journey. Mm -hmm. I, it, I, Photo journaling is so amazing. Uh, I didn't I didn't take the pictures, but a friend of mine took pictures through my whole process of going through cancer. And mm -hmm. I didn't think, I thought they, it was therapy for me a little bit, but when you share that and people can see exactly what you're seeing, they there is therapy for them too. And yeah. there's something to be really said with, an, you know, whether it be an image of your bed, just simply the bed, you know, people, that image can be so profound to people because it's a lifestyle. It's not, it's, it's, it's about what you're going through. So I totally agree. It's quite, it's quite therapeutic to share that, you know. Alicia, any, any technologies or, or, or um, 
or organizations that you have encountered during these, I guess, six months, but maybe a little bit before as well, when you knew that you were going to get the transplant, that helped you, that you would like to mention? Because think about our innovation challenge that is now in its final week. Um, yes. we love for as many companies as possible and organizations, not-for-profits, um, movements, that really transform the lives of those uh, with organ transplants. And it doesn't have to be just about the transplant itself, but about the daily life with, with a transplant. Mm. Uh, yeah, I definitely found a lot of like individual stories that I connected with. Um, mm -hmm. I heard a couple of podcasts I really listened to. Um, there's the Sick Boy podcast that's out of Toronto and they kind of talked with people that had different lists and I could relate to their experiences. Um, I partnered with Rage Regardless Rye, who is, they do rare disease advocacy. And I kind of also kind of partnered with them and did a little bit of just, yeah, digging into rare diseases. And then I also did like yoga and meditation. Um, I did a lot with the open studio in California and yeah, those are all super helpful for me. So yoga and meditation, that's, mm -hmm. again, that's, that's good. It takes your mind off your, your issues as well because you got to focus on it, right? Yes. Saying yeah. with the journal, you get taken out of the, the position of being a patient and now you're, you're focusing on your photography. Right. I understand that. Um, it can help with stress too, for sure. I mean, yeah. especially yeah. if you're practicing it daily, which I think Karen, she just had such a valuable point. You know, she didn't say she had a medicine tracker or, you know, a doctor tracker she was talking about stuff for her mental well-being too and i think mental <laughs> yeah. well-being and any illness especially transplant my gosh everything that you've gone through is so important so everyone must know somebody that could be part of this innovation challenge there's something out there that will help people with a transplant i just i truly believe that so everybody watching this share 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 because yeah. this is an amazing challenge and i, I love watching these innovations come through and you know what? I think it's beyond the challenge. Anyone who has an idea, anyone who has been helped during your journey with a transplant, you know, bring it to us. Because what what if we can make it a reality? I mean, that's what Life Bulb is about. You know, we we focus on transplant, but we also focus on you know ten other disease areas. And our goal is to inspire, inspire, and and empower patients through innovation. You know, we're going to solve problems together. And if we can identify solutions together and we can engine, create an engine to, to build these products, you know, we can really make a difference. So anyone who has an idea even at this stage, just, just bring it out on Transplant Life. I mean, that's the place to, to forward it into the program. Yeah. I love that idea. So Alicia, thank you so much for joining us. And I just want to tell you, thank you for being part of Transplant Life, watching your conversation there really it means a lot to me personally, not because I have a transplant. I don't, but mm -hmm. I love watching other people connect that way. It's just, there's something so yeah. empowering about it. And I just can't thank you enough for being part of that community. It's quite beautiful to thank watch. You. Thank you. I love being there. Awesome. Well, we'll see everyone next time.